be referring to rules and you'll be setting the final for all of these uh, for November 5th. Um, so the first is 228 and this is with the city of Fife. Next is 229, this is with the city of Buckley. Um, the third is 232, this is with the city of DuPont. Um, the fourth is 233, this is the city of Milton. And the last is 234, uh, this is the town of Stillicum. So this is the last batch of, of these um, that you'll be seeing. Uh, under final action on your consent, uh, you have R2024227. R this is confirming the appointment of a new member to the Pierce County Landmarks and Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, and then you, you also have R2024230. Uh, this is confirming the appointment of a new member to the Pierce County Parks and Recreation Citizens Advisory Board. And finally, you have our 2024 231. This is confirming the reappointment of an existing member to the Pierce County Conservation Futures and Open Space Citizens Advisory Board. Um, you'll note under other items, we're starting to see the certified budgets being filed with us, and they just come as listed. These aren't anything you approve, but it's just a requirement of state law that they be filed. And this is our way of acknowledging receipt of those. Um, there are no proclamations this afternoon, uh, so we'll move to Section 8 resolutions, and you have two items here. The first is R2024-211. Um, this is approving the 2025 Spanaway Lake Management District Annual Work Plan. Uh, this received a due pass recommendation at EIDC on October 8th. And finally, you have R2024-220. This is approving the 2024 Pierce County Board of Equalization's request to act on timely filed taxpayer petitions. Uh, which exceed the threshold set forth in state law. And this received a due pass recommendation at rules on October 14th. And those are your agenda items for this afternoon. Thank you, Ms. Long. Are there are questions or comments about today's meeting agenda. I don't see any questions. We're going to move on to item number three, review of committee agendas for the week. Ms. Long, back to you. Thank you. So um, we have the council meeting this afternoon at three um, Wednesday's meetings, the performance audit committee at 10 and the select committee on homelessness at 130 have been canceled. And those are your meetings for this week. Thank you. Um, for the record, Vice Chair Campbell joined us in the middle of the briefing on the item number two. So all members are present. Item number four is external boards and commissions updates. Mr. Taylor, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Just one item to touch on today. Puget Sound Regional Council Executive Board uh, will meet October the 24th at their regular time, <clears throat> which is 10 a.m. Uh, there's one action item that I'll uh, just quickly make you aware of. I did talk about this at a prior um, uh, Tuesday study session, but up for final consideration by the Executive Board uh, this week is the adoption of the 2025 through 2028 Regional Transportation Improvement Program. Um, that's a four-year program. It's similar to our local uh, six-year transportation improvement program. The update to this program that happens uh, periodically is uh, updating the plan or program to reflect projects that have been funded by the PSRC through the regional uh, funding competition mm -hmm. primarily. So that's what this update is showing. It's just showing those projects that PSRC is awarded funding to being included in the program. There can be other minor changes, but that's the principal uh, change that will be reflected in this uh, document. So that's all I have. Thank you. Today. Questions for Mr. Taylor? Don't see any. Thank you. Do any other members have any other external boards and commissions to update us on? No other updates for today. We're at item number five, discussion of administrative items. Ms. Murray. Uh, good afternoon, Julie Murray, Chief of Staff. Um, just to mention again, you'll see in today's council agenda on the consent, the introduction of the ordinance changing the council salary plan um, and well, um, a resolution for its organizational chart. And so just to remind the members, primary purpose of this is to um, make the changes to the clerk to the council position so that we can put that out for recruitment. Um, but it's sort of a necessary precedent to do that since we're making that a salaried position, supervisory position, um, and some just minor changes to the duties um, in the job description. But in addition to that, I mean, we have essentially with the um, that salary plan done a review and revision of all the 
um, job descriptions of staff. And so included in there is updates to the policy staff job descriptions, as well as the performance audit um, folks. Um, those have been reviewed uh, before with you as well as with staff. And so um, I think there's you know, general agreement um, with those changes. Um, I have also um, shared with you and I shared with staff yesterday the um, proposed revisions to the council's administrative guidelines. Um, and we uh, discussed that and had invited both the council member assistants and the council staff to a meeting yesterday afternoon to be able to discuss any issues they may have seen with um, those revisions. Um, I also have offered that if they want to speak with me individually, I'm happy to do that. And thus far, I have had no um, no takers. Uh, so um, I and and that was. Uh, honestly, my hope. It is intended to be a rather light revision, but to reflect better the relationships and processes that we have here in that, the office. So my plan is to um, put into the system then the resolution to adopt those revisions. And um, that ha doesn't have the same urgency as uh, updating the clerk of the council position. So um, that could be something that waits till the end of the year, but I do hope to have that complete. So then when we do the new orientation for members, their staff, that we have a more up-to-date um, set of guidelines, as well as providing that to the human resources department who look at that those, particularly when we have differences in how the county operates um, when we do HR functions. So that's sort of forthcoming. And then with that, I don't have any other issues for discussion. Um, happy to answer any questions. Any questions for our chief of staff? Well, thank you for the seriousness and continuing to implement our organizational chart and those administrative guidelines. Thank you for taking that seriously and continue to make movement there. No other questions there. Um, I don't have anything further for chair's topic. So right, I, item number seven, other business. We'll turn to our communications manager and public information officer, Mr. Dominic. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the council, uh, Brian Dominique, uh, council staff. Uh, in your packet, there is one proclamation um, for Veterans Day. We'll read that proclamation on November 5th, since Veterans Day is on November 11th. So the next meeting won't happen until November 12th. So uh, we'll get that proclamation about a week early. Um, but that's in your packet for review. So if you have any uh, requested changes, please just let me know or uh, get with Councilmember Herrera, who is sponsoring that, and uh, we can make those. Um, and then um, I know you guys have seen Jair around the office. Uh, he is back with us. He's kind of easing back into things and taking it slow, um, which is why I am here today, but he is working on some projects uh, for some council members. He's going to pick those back up. Um, and as we as we move toward November, our op tempo is going to increase. We'll be able to get our podcast back online and we'll be able to get into more routine um, communication output um, that has been kind of on the back burner as we've been uh, with limited staff. And then um, as we approach the end of the year, if you have any mailers, that you want to send out like a, you know, happy holidays or, and a happy new year. Uh, please let me know as you just have to let me know you want to do that so we can get it on the, on the books. Um, but we need to get those submitted um, and get those in production uh, sooner rather than later to make those deadlines. So if that's something you want to do. Please let me know. And pending any questions if I have any questions for Mr. Dominique. Thank you. As always, the expended schedule is in um, at the end of the packet. We're going to ask Mr. Taylor next week to walk us actually through the expanded schedule, um, not to make your eyes glaze over, but to make sure that everyone has a real sense of um, the major bodies of work that are in front of the council for the last really two months of the year. So we're we're gonna just spend some time making sure folks know uh, what is uh, what is to come and how uh, how we're organ organizing ourselves to complete the council's business before the end of the year. So look forward to that uh, next week. But you can get a sneak preview by um, seeing the expanded schedule. Is there any other business by uh, members before we enter into an executive session? 
Ms. Longer, Ms. Murray, is there any other business for council? Um, Ms. Long, to state the purpose of the executive session, please. Thank you. So this is an executive session authorized by RCW 4230-1101I. The purpose is to discuss with legal counsel matters of pending or potential litigation to which the county is or may become a party and which public knowledge of the discussion is likely to result in an adverse legal or financial consequence to the county. Um, there actually are two topics that fall within that uh, section of RCW for today, and one of them might be lengthy. So we're thinking uh, for the time, probably an hour. And we're doing this virtually today. We are doing it to virtually today. Um, there is at least one person, perhaps more of the participants who can only participate that way. So as we, as we know, then that means we all are um, remote for this. And just for the public, the um, upon return from executive session, the only uh, agenda item left is adjournment. There won't be any action. Okay. Well, let's, um, the clock in chambers is 1214 to make sure everyone can get situated and whatever they might need to do to sit in, sit in a, a, another hour long meeting. Why don't we begin that at 1220? Okay. So we'll begin at 1220. We'll anticipate being back here at 120 uh, and just the, for the anticipation to adjourn. Uh, so we'll be in recess for the purposes of the executive session until 1.20 p.m. We can begin in three, two, one. Well, the time is 1.20 p.m. The council is back from its executive session there being no further business before the Pierce County Council in our Tuesday study session, we are adjourned.